It's always a pleasure and honor to stand before the Lord's people. And uh, I don't know that it was mentioned or said maybe before we got here. And it's good to see Sarah back with us <laughs> after, after weeks of pain and misery. Um, let's go ahead and turn to Psalm 119, it's where we've been sitting in our class. And like it or not, that's all I've got going for the day. Um, Psalm 119, we're up to the 40s in the verses where it's the section that the, in Psalm 119 that is called Vav, B-A-U, it's pronounced Vav in Hebrew. Uh, a lot of stuff to uh, uh, look at here, but one larger theme seems to be the main focus here and that is a lack of shame for being Christian. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go ahead and begin reading. It uh, starts in verse 41 here. Uh, Psalm 119, 41. Let thy mercies come also unto me, O Lord, even thy salvation according to thy word. So, so shall I have wherewithal to answer him that reproacheth, reproacheth me, for I trust in thy word. Amen. And take not the word of thy truth utterly out of my, uh, utterly out of my mouth, for I have hoped in thy judgments, so shall I keep thy law and continually forever and ever. Amen. And I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings and will not be ashamed. I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. My hands also will I lift up unto thy commandments, which I have loved, and I will meditate in thy statutes. Amen. The psalmist begins with a prayer that the mercies and salvation of the Lord would would radiate and come down on him as so promised by the Lord's own, own word. I was having a discussion with Sarah several nights ago um, about various things, and, and one thing that I brought up is that we, in, in the situation I was talking about, that we just had to trust that this was right. Mm -hmm. That this had that, that that the Bible held the key to this situation, and that if we just did what this said, the result that this claimed that would fall out from that would be the result that would happen. Now that seems was well, of course for that. I mean, that's 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 obvious. Well, it wasn't obvious to Abraham, right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't obvious to Joshua. He said, well, they didn't read anything out of the Bible. No, but they got the word of the Lord the same, thing, the same way that we did. Amen. Maybe they had an angel come down and hand it to them. Right. Maybe they had, maybe they heard the voice of the Lord or a burning bush spoke out of them. But the word of the Lord is delivered to us the same. Amen. It is honestly, you say, well, those are more miraculous. So I, I, if, 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 I, if, if I wanted to, if I want to follow the word of the Lord, an angel needs to appear to me that, that, that I would for sure know it was from the Lord then, right? Well, how much more miraculous a book that has survived thousands of years of people trying to get rid of it right. than this right here? And again, as I say, there's, there was no guarantee. An angel appears to you and says, walk around the city seven times over the course of seven days. And on the seventh day, walk around a couple more times and it will guarantee you to fall. That defies human logic. That right. makes no sense. That 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 there there is no military strategy there. Honestly, walking around the walls of a walled city in, in in ancient times meant that you were just probably going to get hailed with arrows and rocks and a whole bunch of other stuff. Now we don't have any indication that that happened, but that was standard military procedure for the time. Right. It was silly. It was dumb. And Joshua <laughs> had no guarantee that was going to work. But he did what the word of the Lord told him to do. What happened? Right. They, they, they walked into Jericho. Abraham was promised a great nation, and I'm sure if Jared was here, he'd be talking about it. Uh, Jer uh, uh, Abraham was promised a great nation with no confirmation of that. In fact, 
it defied logic right that he would ever be able to bear a single child let alone a great nation right and we see how those things come out and the psalmist calls upon the Lord here to visit upon him those mercies he actually goes on in, in, in verse 42 and says uh, so uh, so I shall ha uh, have wherewithal to answer him that approaches thee for I trust thy word Amen. it goes beyond just the Lord keeping his promise he's wanting the Lord to keep his promise that way the naysayers the people that say well why do you do it that way why do you do this this way well, it, what's the purpose of that you've got something to answer to them for I can bring up stories of, of men in the past, but if they don't believe the Word of God is true as it's written, that doesn't mean anything. But if right. I can tell them my own personal experience, mm -hmm. if I can be a, a section, my life can be a section of the testimony of God for other people, how much the better? Amen. Because they may not believe that, but maybe they'll believe their old barber or their nurse. Right. It's it's the it's this trust in the Lord and your willingness to do this and your willingness really to speak speak upon it uh, that that cre that has this this impact. Verse forty three and uh, and take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth for I have hoped in thy judgments. Mm -hmm. So shall I keep the uh, thy law. Hey, just quit sticking. So shall I keep thy law continually forever and ever. He didn't want the, 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 the psalmist took this idea into his life, the keeping of God's word, the, 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 the following after him, and expecting God's word to be true mm -hmm. in his results. And he says he hoped upon those judgments. And you think, well, that, 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 that seems like a different idea than what we're talking about. No, it's the exact same thing. Right. It, 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 uh, judgments simply meaning a dividing of, of what is right and what is wrong. If you're following God and you're in the right, He is going to be on your side. Amen. That, that, that's, it, 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 you, you, you can say, well, God can do whatever He wants. <clears throat> yes, within, within a certain limit. And you're like, well, God's not limited. Actually, he is. He's limited by what he told himself that he would do. Right. God's limitation is actually right here. He said we would do things, and we would do them. If you, if, 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 if and, and a lot of people won't disagree with this. And there's, I think, there's a whole, a whole lot of stuff that goes on to it, an awakening of the heart, and however else you want to call it. But the Bible says, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to be saved. Right. Amen. That's that's Bible. I, I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to. I'm not going to try to defend and try to say I'm not free will. I'm just going to tell you what the Word of God says. Amen. And, and if you believe, you're going to be saved. He, he is. He is bound by these things. Amen. And he said, "Don't take those. Don't take all that stuff away from me because I am hoping. I am. My faith is bound up in." Your self justification, Lord. Mm -hmm. your, your ability to say, You are right, and by my own law, I'm bound to, to be there for you. He says, And because of that, I'm going to keep it continually forever and ever. I'm going to strive to find myself walking after the, the, the precepts of this book. And are we ever going to be able to keep it? No, but the, 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 the ability, your inability to keep it has nothing to do about your, your, the, the purpose behind trying. Right. right. It, 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 has, it, has nothing to, it has nothing to do with that. Well, well I, I, I can't, I can't, you know, I can't not, uh, not do this, that, and the other thing. So do, do you try? Right. Have you tried? Sometimes my, my kids will come to me and say, hey, Dad, can you do this? And I'll, I'll be like, did, did you even attempt this before you came to, came, came to me with this issue? Not that I don't want to help, but they're both getting pretty big now. There's some things you can do on your own. Right. Miracle, I know. Wow. <laughs> Flares and fireworks. It's crazy. 
And, and I think a lot of time we go go before God and he's asking us to do something simple. It's not like he's looking at Peter and saying, yeah, come out on the water with me. You know, it's, right. it's, it's nothing that crazy. It's like, hey, just trust. You know, things look a little bleak on the financial side, but guess what? Women are beekeepers at home and mm -hmm. men are supposed to be out there working. And if you stick to that, mm -hmm. everything's going to be okay. Well, I, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. it, 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 you know, this economy, everything, every, every, oh, the, the, you know, the, this economy, this, this, the, 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 the politicians, the whole, whole in the ozone layer, blame everything, everything except you didn't try. Right. You're not keeping it continually forever and ever. It goes from the smallest little thing, from little white lies that we tell ourselves and others, all the way up to uh, to us uh, to covetousness and you know larger sins, if you want to call them that. We don't keep them forever and ever. So then we also then we think about that and say, well, I go to church every week. Why am I not getting blessed more? Well, going to church every week, I don't actually see any promises of God based on your baseline level of faithfulness. Right. <laughs> that just should be something you want to do. Right, it's, 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 it's not. It's not. There's, there's no promises regarding that. So people are. Well, the Lord doesn't bless me. Mm. Have, have you done anything worth, worthy of blessing? Right. Did you step out on faith any at all this week? I uh, verse forty five. And I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. Now, it almost seems like he changes subject here, but we have to keep keep the through line on this chapter. We're talking about following the Lord's commandments and the things that he that, that he follows up behind us on that. And he says, I will walk at liberty. Matthew Henry's commentary, which I have been reading on the back end of studying these books because of Henry's association with this chapter, said uh, that you cannot have true happiness or true liberty unless you're following the law of God. Right. A lot of people consider this book and the truths found therein restrictive. Um, they hold me back. There's just a long list of rules written down by a bunch of ancient white hairs that have no application or no meaning or no bearing on today's uh, today's society that it was it was written by men who believed in a in, in a in a homophobic and transphobic God and, and he is um, he doesn't like them that's not a sin that he enjoys right but the verse forty five seems to indicate that if you're walking in his precepts that is the ultimate form of happiness and liberty. Maybe Freedom. Right. I am free in Jesus Christ. Amen. I am free when I'm walking after his way. And that may and that may mean having to bind this flesh up. The Bible, the Bible doesn't say this here, but there's an implication just based on what we know on other scriptures through, through, through the contextual evidence and the rest of the book that when your spirit is more free, your flesh is more bound up and your flesh is going to hate it. It's going to not like it. And yes, it's going to come up with reasons on why not to do this. Right. Right. But we have so many people saddened and depressed a, a, and anxious and worry and hand wringing and, 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 and money and, 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 and politics and boy I hope Joe Biden don't get in there again and I don't know that he'll last to another election but I, 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 boy it'd be awful if Hillary ran again and they, they locked up Donald Trump and, 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 and what are we going to do? Fear and anxiety and depression stemming what? A lack of happiness. Right. Amen. And if we look at what this chapter is telling us here, or not this chapter, well, I guess it is part of a chapter. Uh, uh, we look at what this section of 119 is telling us here. It's that real happiness, real liberty, real, it stems from a following after God's word. Right. And that should not be a revelation to God's people. That should be something that we have tucked away as part of our tool bag, our spiritual, our spiritual weapon trove, right? But we've just let that fall behind because we want to live like everybody else is living. There you go. We want to have the things that everybody else has. 
We want to, we want to live the lives. And, but let me tell you, folks, up here across from our house this week on Wednesday, I don't know how many people saw this, mm -hmm. a man committed suicide right out in front of uh, uh, the 79 restaurant. Okay. He was a man from Kentucky. And you know what? It wasn't somebody that was a drug addict or down on their luck. He was an orthopedic surgeon from Murray. Mm. Shot one in the windshield to make sure that the gun worked, put it to his chest, and blew his heart out. Mm. Everything in the world to be happy for. They said that he was actually even starting to repair a relationship with his ex-wife. I made the joke in the barbershop that may be why he shot himself. Uh, <laughs> but but, <laughs> but the, uh, uh, the had everything to live for. Mm -hmm. Had money. Don't we associate money with happiness? Mm. Had a good job. I think he worked, uh, he didn't work in Murray at the Murray Hospital, but he worked at another larger hospital there in Kentucky. Had a good car. It drove all the way from Kentucky over here to, from where, to where he shot himself. Everything to live for. But the lack of happiness right. was still there. Amen. Right. I don't know about that man's spiritual condition. But the destruction of your own flesh is an indicator of some bad things that are going on inside your heart. Right. I, do I think saved people can reach that situation? Absolutely I can. We can get depressed. Why? Because we have abandoned the source of our happiness. Mm -hmm. we, think, we think that the more that we lean toward how the world does things, the happier we're going to be. And you will for a season. Mm -hmm. uh, from what everything we, we look at the prodigal son, from everything we can, we, he lived it up right. for a while. And I think many of us exist in the hog pen. And when we come to church, we say, uh, I'm not getting anything out of it. That's because you're failing to eat what the hogs are being fed. Mm -hmm. When all you need to do is go back home mm -hmm. where you belong. He says, I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings and will not be ashamed. Now, here it all comes to a head. We have, we have happiness. We have liberty. We have the service of God through the precepts of his word. We have the promises of God running down in our lives. And what is that supposed to yield inside of us? And I kind of indicated this when we were talking earlier. It should make me want to tell other people right. about it and not be ashamed about it. He said that he didn't want in, in, in the early part of the chapter, in verse forty, in verse forty-two, he says uh, he says uh, that he would have something to answer him that reproacheth me. There's no shame. There shouldn't be any shame. Hey, you're living a human. If you're saved and you're following after God's word, you're living a human's best life. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I'm not going to say that I am, but I try every day to do 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 what I can. Uh, I'm not living in, I'm not, I don't have, you know, a, a $80,000 pickup truck and, and, and uh, you know, a two-story mansion out there, but I've got a, albeit very leaky, ranch-style home and a car that I managed to about rip the rear fender off of and uh, a van that we're still painting on, and, and, and I'm happy. Mm -hmm. I'm content with that. Everything that I need, hey, at least, the, you know, this. I was, I was thinking this morning, uh, I, I don't know what's going on with this doorknob down here. I don't think it was anybody's fault. I think that door decides to lock itself sometimes. The other times, it's like, no, I'm not going to today. Uh, but we got locked out, and I got in here, and I got wet, and I was thinking, well, we're, we're, we're wet outside. The doorknob's messed up on the church. It's leaking there at the house still because apparently our roof is fine, um, <laughs> according to the insurance adjuster anyway. Uh, and and, and I, I thought, well... It's leaking, but at least it wasn't leaking over our bed. You know, I got to sleep soundly last night, dry. You know, the worst things could be happening, mm -hmm. happening, and and, and 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 we we need we need to be happy. We need to share this happiness with others. We need to let them know about the good things that are going on in our Amen. life. And if you say, "Well, brother Adam, there are no good things going on in our life," I'll ask you this: Are you saved? Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. Are you? 
You're not gonna you're not gonna be very happy if you're not saved. And right. if you claim you're saved and you're not happy, examine yourself. And I'm not talking about like do a little personal inventory. It's like, yep, I guess I'm good. No, I'm talking about actually get on your knees and find out what's going on because it's a you problem. I guarantee it. Mm -hmm. It says, I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. Also, my hands also will I lift up unto thy commandments, which I have loved, and I will meditate in thy statutes. He goes on a little bit further here and talks about how he, and we've actually seen this a couple, in a couple of these sections before, and end up with a delight in the word of God. And these sections giving you reasons to be delighted by the word of God, and them saying, I am delighted by it. Mm -hmm. This should make us happy. Following God's word should make us happy. It should give us liberty. It should give us energy. It should give us zeal. Amen. And if it's not, send life at the door. Mm -hmm. Nothing more to be said about it. Right. Nothing more that can be said about it. Let's go ahead and dismiss with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to stand before your people, to divide your word and and uh, and worship you together, dear Lord. We pray that you would uh, take this to our lives, that we might apply it, that we might be better servants for you, dear Lord, and uh, that uh, as we go out into our week, we might find uh, more joy and happiness in your own word. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. Amen.